Hello now, people. Today we're going to be doing another Halloween set. I'm calling this one Bloody Mary. It's a very dark set in every sense of the word. So a lot of the video, I apologize, is going to be really dark. You cannot be able to see what I'm doing that well. Um, starting off with a medium length coffin nail and um, using this. This is really a jelly color. It's a very dark red. I'll have all the particulars in the description of these. But I remember when I was swatching this color, thinking, man, this looks like actual blood. So I knew I had to use it in a Halloween set. So here we go with it. Uh, that particular nail that I'm painting right now, I messed up. That one should have been black. So I'm going to do a one black nail later. But I, I do go back and fix that. Now I'm only going to use one coat of this on all of the nails except for the index finger, which I'm going to have two coats of this coat, this red on there. And I've sped this up a bit so you guys don't have to sit through just watching me put the polish on. Although I know some people do like that. Okay, I'm going to flip this over in a second and clean off the excess that might have gotten underneath. And some of it did. Now on my opening picture and my closing picture of these, you'll see I have lightened the picture quite a bit so that you can see the design better because as I said, it's very dark. Um, this is the black nail I'm doing on here. I did end up doing two coats on the black one. Of course, now I'm out of frame, so you can't see it anyway. I did so good on my last video of keeping things in frame till the very end. Now, this one has issues along the way. I thought I was doing a good job, but, well, <laughs> you'll see. Okay, there's the one that I'm going back and painting black that I messed up and painted read the first time. Okay, now we're going to use the black and a detailer brush. And what I'm going to do is paint the drip lines for the blood on here. And the reason I'm doing that right now instead of just doing it at the end is because I wanted the top where the blood is going to be not to have the stripes underneath it. So, because I knew the black would show through the, through the blood part. So I'm just going to do the outline for the blood drips. So that when I'm painting the stripes, I know... Uh, where to not go with them, if that makes sense. And I know it's really hard to see exactly what I'm doing on here. I tried to find a way in here to lighten this up so you could see it better, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. sakes. I'm sorry if you guys are having to hear there's a truck outside right now doing something. I think it's a trash truck. Making all kinds of racket. You can sort of see the outline that I've painted on there for the drips. There are going to be three nails on each hand that have the blood drips. 
that was the thumb before and then I believe this one is the middle one and then there'll be the pinky. I thought I sped this section up, but maybe I maybe I missed this one. And now I'm out of frame again. Sorry about that. These were a pretty fairly easy set to do. There's nothing complicated on here. So, if you wanted to recreate them, it shouldn't be too hard. If you don't want them this dark, you could use a little bit of a brighter red in there. Okay, now I'm going to go on to the stripes. There's going to be black stripes. Kind of a semi-thick stripe. And once again, you really can't see what I'm doing on there because it's so dark. But I ma mainly I did one stripe down the middle and then one on either side of that. So some of the nails have a thicker one at the edge and some don't. Some are more thin by the time it gets to the edge. I'm just using uh, like a medium length striping brush for these. These are just cheap striping brushes that I got off of, uh, I think, Wish a long time ago. That's what I have to use, so that's what we do and make it work. And frankly, they work perfectly fine. There's some things where you just don't need to spend a lot of money on and then other things where you want to have a better quality. I don't do a lot of striping so these work okay for me. Now you can sort of see the stripes, they're real, they're real hard to see. And once I get the top coat on, oh yeah, and you're going to make sure you run your stripe down across the end of the nail too. Once I get the top coat on here, they're going to be even harder to see because it, it's going to be a matte top coat, so it's going to smooth all that out. You'll notice the pinky nail was already done over there. I, was, I actually did a practice one before I started this time, which I don't often do. I usually just wing it. That's why when, when you watch the videos of me doing my own nails, you'll see all kinds of mistakes because I'm usually I'm figuring out how to do stuff that I've never done before. But when you're painting your stripes on these, you're going to work around the drip lines. Okay, once the stripes are on, I'm going to cure that for 90 seconds. And then I'm going to go on there with the matte top coat.
you want to be kind of generous with the top coat because uh, with the mat so if you if you put it on too thin then you you might get streaks in it and it look kind of patchy and doesn't look smooth but we're going to do all of these with the, the matte top coat Are you guys all getting ready for Halloween? I know it's a little early yet, but I know some people like to start on their Halloween decorations and whatnot real early. I know our neighbor has stuff up already. I think I might do one more set of Halloween nails after this and then that's going to be it for this season except for my own set which I'll be doing uh, at the beginning of October which I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do yet okay now we're going to go back to that red gel uh, jelly red dark red and we're going to now paint the blood on there I'm going to be kind of generous with this when I'm filling in the blood drips because I want it to be raised up. And also, I want you will need to make sure you're going to cover over those black lines where you outline the, the blood area because you don't want that, those to show through. You can, and you can, since this is a jelly color, I felt uh, okay putting it on rather thick because uh, I figured it wasn't super dark pigment. It wasn't super pigmented. I figured the light would be able to penetrate through there in the lamp and cure it all the way through, and it did. I gave it, uh, just to be safe, I gave it a two-minute cure, I believe, just to make sure it was cured all the way through. You see that on the palette? It does. It just totally, to me, it just looks like total blood. Like I had to use it for this. I don't recall it looking that dark when I bought it either. But that's what happens when you buy stuff online. Uh, you may be noticing I don't have gloves on for this set. I decided since it was going to be straightforward and I figured I could get by without getting it all over me. So I opted not to wear them. Big mistake. <laughs> Later on after I finished these I just started to get a breakout. And I don't even know how I get the polish on my hands. I never see it getting on there. 
I usually don't even, I don't see it, I don't feel it. Okay, now we're going to use the clear glossy top coat. And we're going to go over all of the blood again. And I'm going to be generous putting this on too to give it a little more height. Also, that red, uh, the red color has a bit of a tacky layer to it, so putting the, the, the top coat over it will take care of that, and then I don't have to clean it off. Somehow, I think when I'm cleaning the tacky layer off, um, it's getting, uh, I don't know if it's because I'm holding the wipe, and then the wipe, it goes through the wipe and gets on my hands or what, but I don't know. And just would be nice if they would have polish that I could work with so I didn't have to worry about getting on my skin. And I'm just going to fill that in with the big brush. And this is when I realized this bottle's almost empty, so I decided I'm going to pour some of it out. I got a little more out than I expected. Okay, well, once I get done fiddling with this, I'm going to flash cure that for 30 seconds and just leave it in the lamp for, the, for a while. And then when I get all of them, get the top coat, I'm going to flash cure each one after I get the top coat on. But then at the end, I'm going to go back and give them a full cure of 90 seconds to let them get done. Because I had piled so much of it on there, I was afraid it was going to start running off the sides. And I didn't want it doing that. The in, in certain angles, you can see the red stripes, and then in other ones, you, you just, it just look like anything there. It's like all black. They do look pretty, pretty cool in person, though. Okay, and let's get, get the top coat on the pinky. Okay, now those have all been cured and we're ready to put the stones on here. I'm using uh, this rhinestone glue. And you can't tell, but that nail that I have out there ready to go is the red one. And I'm going to be putting like a necklace design on this one. And it's going to be really hard for you guys to see what I'm doing because the stones are black and they don't show up on there very well. Now, I don't know what you call that shape, but... I'm going to have one of those as like the main gem, and we're going to use some of these black stones. On the other one, we're going to be using some of these red crystals. And also, I've got these little silver rings. They have kind of a pattern on them. I'll be using those around the red stones on the other one, and then of course, silver caviar beads. All of my stones and those rings and what and caviar beads all came from AliExpress. Okay, right here I'm just we're just trying it on to see what is figure out where I exactly wanted to put it. And then we'll get it glued up and stick it on. I just ran one line of glue down there because I figured when I stuck the the stone on there, it was going to squoosh out anyway, it would spread itself out. Now, if you see what I mean, you can't even see it now. And that's the red nail, that's not even a black one. But once I get to the point of putting the 
caviar beads on this one, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. I'm just putting the glue lines for the, the like necklace chain part. And then we will just pick out the stones that are going to go on there. I seem to be picking up like every one, uh, every other one that I don't need. I've got loads of those teeny tiny ones, but. Yeah, that one is not going to be quite big enough. It's a little smaller than the other ones. So I need to go back and find the right size. And then I'm going to use those that one that I first took out that's just slightly smaller and and put that at the next part. and we have that on there and once I move them around where I want them to be a little bit better uh, then we're going to move on to the caviar beads see in that shot you can kind of see where they are if there wasn't any light reflecting off of those you'd never see them at all I'm going to put the caviar beads in between the stones and a couple at the very end of the up there near the top near the cuticle edge. And I'm now realizing that I don't have enough glue on there for these to stick on, so we're going to have to go get some. I'm just putting little dots of glue on all the places where I want them to go where there wasn't any squishing out at. And of course there's always a hair. Sorry, I'm out of shot again.
I decided at this point, I think, to put just a, a few at the point of that gem at the bottom of the big longer stone. I didn't want to do a whole thing and surround the whole thing. So I just, I think I just put three at the tip of there. Like two at the top and then one, one more. So it's like pointy, like a triangle. And that one, I don't know what was up with those two. Those two kept wanting to go together up there in that one spot. It might have had a little too much glue on there. Okay, now that is going in to be cured. And now we're moving on to the black now where we're going to use the red stones and these little silver rings. Now right now I'm just laying them on there to get an idea as to where I'm going to put them before I put my glue on. Because I wasn't exactly sure of my design, I was just kind of making it up as I went along. Now, once I get all the stones on, I did go back with the top coat again, the matte top coat, and go around all of these because there was some spots where the, the shiny glue was showing, and I didn't want that. I don't know why I didn't film it at that point. I thought I did. Sometimes after I've been in here in the heat for a while working on something, by the time I get near the end, I'm getting a little loopy and tired and I just want to get out of here. Most of the time I'm doing nails, I'm doing it in the afternoon, so the heat has had time to build up. I know it might be getting to be cooler weather where a lot of you guys are living, but here in SoCal, it's still hot. We're still in the 90 degree weather uh, zone here and probably will be for most of next month. After that, it'll be yay, finally a brief, you get a very brief fall and then all of a sudden it'll be winter. And I know winter when I say winter, it's cold for us, but I know for a lot of you guys that have snow, um, you'll be laughing at me thinking that it's cold here, but it'll be like in the 50s or 60s. That's kind of cool for us. But I can't wait because I am loving the cooler weather. Now I'm just taking, I got the, uh, the rings on there. Now we're just taking the red, some red gems and sticking it into the center of the ring. to make, uh, make the, the gems a little bit fancier. And at this point, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with, I wanted something more on there than that. And in going with the stripes on the other nails, I decided to just put one in, in stone in the middle of those two and then a couple of, uh, at the top of them. I didn't want to go all the way down to the cuticle edge. I find that putting stones and, and things down near, um, not the cuticle edge, the free edge, when you get them too close to the free edge and you're doing things, you know, your general life things, it's, you, you tend to knock the ones off that are down there at the free edge a lot easier because, they, you know, you're doing stuff and the end of your nails getting caught on things. And now I'm just looking around for one that's going to be the size I want. And the, the, there's, I have several different kinds in there. Some of them are super shiny and, and uh, sparkly, and then some of them are not so much. So I was trying to find one of the, some of the sparkly ones. In the right size that I need it to. And we're 
just going to get them lined up. I think I'm going to stick one more tiny one at the top of that. And then I'm going to get them all aligned the way I want them, and then I'm going to give that a cure. I've been curing all my gems with the gem glue for two minutes just to be doubly sure that everything's fully cured. And that will be going in and getting cured. And there's the finished set. If you liked my video, please give me a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. See you next time.